As I'm sure you guys know, when it comes to the WNBA, not the biggest fan of their league and the attitude of some of their players. As looking at this league, the majority of players blame men, as well as NBA players, for their sport not being successful. And one of the popular narratives is that men don't support us, men don't tune in, blah blah blah, blame men, it's all their fault. Well, just last night that overall notion was completely debunked. As in a women's college basketball game, Iowa vs. LSU, Caitlin Clark vs. Angel Reese, a whopping 7 million people tuned in to watch those two square off. Compare that to the WNBA Finals just months ago. That series couldn't even crack a million viewers at their best. And you gotta ask the question, why can a WNBA game, WNBA series, not get as many viewers as a college game with quote unquote, worse players? Well, the answer is quite simple. College basketball has Caitlin Clark. If you watch this girl play, she hits 30 foot bombs, has dimes like magic, and handles like a female Steph Curry. And unlike the WNBA, women's college basketball, they have actual superstars and recognizable teams like Iowa, USC, South Carolina, and especially UConn. In a lot of ways, women's college basketball with superstar talent far superior to even men's college basketball. As looking at the best men's players, a lot of one and done guys, ton of roster turnover. Women's ball, they play four, sometimes even five years with one school and one team that already has an established identity. And above all else, LSU versus Iowa is viewed as a rivalry. And Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese, yes, they are friendly, but those two players are viewed as rivals. The WNBA men's college basketball does not have that. If you have players like Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, a Paige Beckers, a Juju Watkins, actual superstar players playing women's basketball, people will tune in if it's entertaining. And the storylines, that is the icing on top of the cake. The big time problem with the WNBA over the past 20 years, nobody's investing in these teams or really knows where they are. I mean, teams like the Connecticut Sun, the Dallas Wings, are just super obscure and irrelevant in the sports landscape. So when I see Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese have this crazy rivalry in college, what does it remind me of? Magic vs. Bird in 1979. And in terms of NBA landscape, WNBA landscape, at both those points, they were struggling financially with viewership. If they handle this correctly, mold this rivalry, build a league around these two players. You're witnessing Magic and Bird in a female form. Now, the only problem I see isn't their talent, isn't their skill. It's the players in the league today, even past players, giving Caitlin Clark the go-ahead to the face of their league. I mean, someone like Cheryl Swoops, a WNBA legend, retired player, was taking a dump on Clark just weeks ago. If you're going to break a record, this isn't just for Caitlin, but you asked me about Caitlin. If you're going to break a record, to me, if it's legitimate, you have to break that record in the same amount of time that that player set it. Okay. In, right? So if, if Kelsey Plum set that record in four years, mm -hmm. well, Caitlin should have broke that record in four years. But because there's a COVID year, then there's another year. You know what I mean? So she's already had an extra year. Dang. Like he or she's killing them, but you have a 25 year old playing against a 20 year old. Mm -hmm. Like you, sh you should be killing them. Yeah. Cause you've been doing it a lot longer than they have. When she comes to the league, regardless of what team she goes to that has vets on that team, mm. she probably ain't gonna get 40 shots a game. Cheryl swoops in that clip right there, lied at least four different times. Her first lie saying Caitlin Clark should have broke the record in the same time as Kelsey Plum, because Caitlin Clark apparently played five years. Well, that's not true, only played four, and looking at total games, broke the record in 130, compared to Plum, who did it in 139. Her second lie, saying Caitlin Clark right now is 25, busting up 22 year olds. Well, also not true, Caitlin Clark herself is 22. Now her last lie saying Caitlin Clark takes 40 shots per game. Again, not true, inaccurate, and false. Most attempts she's ever taken is 22.7 this season. 
and her overall efficiency with that many shot attempts, definitely pretty impressive. From the field, above 45%, and from three, just under 40%. So you gotta ask yourself, why would someone like Cheryl Swoops, an ambassador for her league, a retired legend, lie about Clark so blatantly before she even entered the league? Well, here's my theory. People like Cheryl Swoops, retired players, active players, are super jealous of Caitlin Clark getting the attention they never got. And as much as they preach WNBA, it's a family, a sisterhood, they're all in it together. At the end of the day, a lot of these people, they are kind of selfish. And when it comes to WNBA, a league already on the margins, someone like Clark coming in getting so much shine, so much money, that's gonna rub some players, some coaches, the wrong way. And what's the old saying? A rising tide lifts all boats. If these players were smart, they'd attach their ship to Caitlin Clark and ride it into the sunset. As if Clark successful at great WNBA player, their salaries, their attention, by proxy, will increase. And if you follow the news lately, you know Ice Cube offered Caitlin Clark $5 million to win the Big 3 Men's League. Now that offer by Cube out of left field, surprising, but definitely pretty impressive for Caitlin Clark. And take a wild guess. Was Cube's offer received with applause, or was it downplayed and diminished? Well, here's your answer from active player in the WNBA. If you're gonna say that it's for that, then stand on that. But I don't think it's, I think he's trying to make a business decision, which he's a businessman, that makes sense. But to mask it in this, I wanna uplift and support WNBA players and women athletes is kind of a cop out, I think. And I don't think it really makes any sense. I've said it before and I'll say it again. With these WNBA players, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Someone like Andre Godala gives a player on Twitter props, says, way to go number 23, you're playing great. What do they do? Accept that praise? Of course not. They respond to Godala, attack him, and say he's, quote, disrespecting them. I mean, these players, they beg for support, beg for money, attention, TV deals. And then when some guy comes out of left field, gives one of their players that, they attack that guy for his very generous offer. And saying Ice Cube, a businessman, only wants attention, wants clout. Well, look, he's a businessman making a business decision. Caitlin Clark, unlike this girl, generates ratings, interest, and most importantly, money. If you truly want to grow your league, grow your sport, get more interest, eyes, and get paid more, it's pretty simple. Embrace someone like Clark, who's electric. And for Caitlin Clark, a lot of comparisons, Steph Curry 2.0, and we've seen all that. But I think one of the more apt comparisons that hasn't been made is comparing her to Pistol Pete. Not just play style shooting, the flare, the flash, it's more than that. Pistol Pete back in the day when he came into the NBA, due to his play style flashy nature, was reviled by his teammates and especially opponents. I think Clark going pro, being so electric, so flashy, pulling from 35 feet. For a lot of her own teammates, especially opponents, they're going to despise her and go out of their way to diminish her. If you think Pistol Pete had it bad with men in the 70s, imagine Caitlin Clark in the 2020s with women. It's going to be a thousand times worse. So that right there is the end of the video. And once again, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers had me watching women's basketball from around 8 o'clock till 12. To nail the point home, myself and many don't hate women's sports. What we hate is the attitude entitlement of the WNBA. And maybe, just maybe, with players like these, superstars like these, that tide will start turning in this league, I should become interesting and watchable. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.